All right, today is the day and we are back working on the tub and we will be working on the tub for quite a bit in the near future, trying to get that thing built up. And at least we need to get it to the point where we can bolt the subframes to it and then we have some accurate dimensions forward and aft, be able to tie those pieces together, put the clamshells on with the hinges and those kind of things. And so we're gonna be, like I said, working on the tub. And one of the things that we're gonna be looking at today is gonna be part of an answer to a question that I get quite a bit. And uh, let me just go through and kind of explain what the question is and the, this video will kind of be an answer to it. At least you'll be able to see how we're kind of developing the tub and some of the other components into a shape that's gonna make the, those parts at least more operable or functional than just the thin shell that might have been had we just laid up an original product off of our plug way back when. Now, if you've watched videos in the past where we took molds off of the plug and we used a system where we put flanges on the plug and then used a flashing on those flanges to turn that back in the opposite direction and create this little uh, step in our parts so that we have, instead of just a flat panel, we have at least a step back. Well, there are some places on the car that are gonna be much more complex than just a single turn back. And one of those, of course, is the door seals and the shape around here where we have to have actual airtight, watertight seals, rubber pieces that are gonna go in here and shape that. Now, the question I get very often is, why didn't we 3D model this and then use CNC technology to carve these pieces and then take our molds off? Now the skills in 3D modeling would, I believe would take you years to develop to the point where you could actually do this kind of modeling, or at least have a team of 3D modelers working together on different components and then be able to test fit each of those components together. Because what we're doing here is creating something that we really don't know what it is until it all comes together in this form. Um, like I said, you could develop it that way, but it's such a long process of trial and fit and testing thing and the movements of things. Whereas here we're going to sculpt and create all this form of these areas that need weather stripping and seals on it. And then we're going to put the weather stripping and seals on it and then create the door around those pieces. Um, then once that's done, if we were going to take this production, we could literally step in here, scan this 3D scanner, and then go and produce the molds. The molds would have to be much more durable, less flex in them, larger flanges for infusion or vacuum forming. And like I said, those molds would be rather expensive um, on a magnitude of like four or five times of what we paid to produce the molds to pop these parts out of. And so since we're going after that budget, Another question of what my budget is. Started out $25,000. We're pushing at about $30,000 right now. And if we had gone for those kind of expensive prototype, not prototype, but more production oriented molds, those molds would have been closer to $15,000, $20,000 to produce all that parts. And so hence you see why we're going with the prototype, perfecting all these things, and then it could go to production. Whether we take it to production, is open. I don't know yet what I'm gonna do, just still looking at seeing what the interest is. And if I did take it to production, it may make it to where I would go to a tubular frame and just use all the components with the molded pieces here and fit that on there. As, as you can see, the labor intensive part of building this tub would probably push um, a, a kit or a car way out of the expense, way out of the price range that uh, people might be willing to pay. Anyway, we are working on these door seals, these latch plate areas. Anyway, let's go take a look at that. To start off with, this bulkhead that's gonna create our strike plate for this door close um, was cut at a little bit of an angle. I need to trim it out nice and square because we're gonna put a piece of flashing against it that we want at a 90 degree angle. And while I'm doing some trimming, Back when we did our footwell expansion, there were some things that never got kind of cleaned up. We won't get to uh, finishing that in fiberglass today, but we're going to go ahead and while we're trimming some foam, clean that up as well. And just uh, taking our little uh, oscillating saw and a saw, clean that up. 
But to build this bulkhead and uh, flashings for our weather seals, I'm going to use some more aluminum flashing that's used in roofing. And it's uh, easily trimmed with just some heavy scissors or some tin snips. And I've taken it out to the break and given it a couple of bends. The one bend is going to make a little bit of a rain gutter. The other one, 90 degree bend that turns back, it's going to give us some strength and stiffness by uh, making our fiberglass make that 90 degree bend little compound shape add to our strength as well and to extend that flashing down along that uh, foam piece of bulkhead for that strike plate just forming that by uh, rolling it on that hard edge of the car there to give a little curve to it and then I'm gonna punch some holes through the aluminum and put some screws into the foam to hold that uh, piece of aluminum in there to create our little turn back as that flashing a little nip in it, bend it into uh, the two pieces of aluminum so they meet up. And then whenever I have a joint like that, I use some real duct tape. This is that aluminum, true aluminum tape with some adhesive on the back. And that makes a nice good transition between two pieces of metal. I'll show you what I did on the, talking about the punching holes to it, putting screws to it from the opposite side here where you can see the back side of what I was working on. So that first piece of uh, metal flashing with the bends in it, I just tape it in place, hook it to some aluminum onto the fiberglass body there. And it's gonna come out in the end, so it's just uh, lightly stuck in there, just enough to hold the place where we get some uh, foundation layers of fiberglass on it. As I roll form that a little bit, get a little bit of a curve to the aluminum, take an ice pick, punch some holes through it, some nice flat head screws. They turn easily into the foam, but they tied to fin that foam that it sucks that aluminum right up against that joint that we want to make. And then I got some exposed foam. I just mixed up some slurry that we're going to be using to uh, fix our uh, door jams to make some shape on it. So while I have this uh, slurry mixed up, cover up that foam that we're going to be going back to another date. Then jump over here. Now I don't want this uh, slurry to stick to this aluminum, so I'm putting in just a mylar tape on there and it won't stick to the mylar. So just as a temporary workaround, that mylar tape on there, and then I'll just take my uh, slurry, thicken up even a little bit more so I can uh, kind of create some shape with it. Now once I, I should have uh, created this in the foam originally, but uh, trimmed off the foam and realized later that I needed a little more of a bump out there to uh, create a little more tight seal. And then back with the other side here, I got this uh, extra slurry mixed up, so I figured I might as well put it somewhere useful. So I've got these little joints in the footwell that I'm just gonna put a little uh, radius into the corners. Good place to use up that extra slurry. Nice clean round radius that make it easy when I do that fiberglass work up there to make it round those bends. Anyway, come back uh, the next day when that thing's set up and uh, take a couple screws out so that flashing swings away. Get my rasp out and start shaping this piece. Rasp and a little bit of sandpaper and just keep working that thing until I get exactly the shape I want. Looking nice. Now once I've got the shape I want, I'm going to put that uh, peel off the mylar tape and uh, put some screws back in that flashing. Bring it back down there because that flashing is going to form a little another turn back that we want. And once everything's ready, I'm just going to vacuum up, clean everything really nicely. And put some release agent on the aluminum. Being very careful not to hit any of the foam or fiberglass because I want it to stick to the foam and the fiberglass, but not on the aluminum. And once that... Uh, Release agent was cured. Start putting some fiberglass on. Put some resin down and laying up my fiberglass. I'm using a nice uh, twill fabric that makes uh, good bends around these 90 degree turns. Going up along that, uh, like I said, that compound shape of that little ring gutter and 90 degree turn back on that uh, thing in the back side of the window. And then down onto the bulkhead strike plate area 
and onto the aluminum flashing. Like I said, they had a nine degree bend, a little bit of radius in that foam. And then the fiberglass comes up and meets the bodywork. Now the astute viewer might notice that uh, I'm putting a layer of fiberglass against the bodywork, which is a joint that we created originally on our molds. So that gap, paddle gap there is uh, getting lost a little bit by that one layer of fiberglass. Um, not much, the fiberglass actually pretty thin, but I do need a bond area there. But it, what's gonna happen is that part of the door is trimmed out. There is no turn back from that flashing on the mold. And so I can trim that door back and get the panel, the gap in that panel between the bodywork and the door trim it back to exactly what I want, probably about um, one half a millimeter is where our gap will be in the end. But we're just going to build up about two, maybe three layers of glass here. This is, again, like a lot of things in this early parts, is just building a foundation layer that we will be uh, working off of later on. Now, as it comes up here and meets to the roof line, we're just got almost a butt joint, which is uh, absolutely no strength at all in the fiberglass joints as it goes. But we will be fiberglassing from the backside after this is cured. And here we are the next day, as after it has cured, get a trim off all the extra fiberglass and uh, cured glass that's hanging off the edges. Like I said, just the uh, two or three layers so it trims off with a razor knife. And once we got it trimmed off, we're going to start pulling the screws out. And then we can just uh, peel away our flashing since we have a good releasing agent on it. It falls right off. There it is. Not super strong. Still a little bit of flex in it. But that's okay because we're going to reinforce it from the backside the next thing. So that fiberglass will come down across the back side of the foam here. And then in fact, down in here, it'll go across our new fiberglass layer and then wrap around that uh, bulkhead foam. And it'll be trimmed off here, but we want to leave a little extra for fiberglassing on top of later on. And what's gonna happen here is once that's finished, this kind of rubber seal will uh, just clip on this, hold upholstery on the back side, rubber seal to weather seal on the outside. Of course, like I said, this needs to be trimmed later and this will actually be a uh, much tighter sit right in here against that bulkhead. I hope that gave you a little more insight of how we're gonna make these components all fit together and have actual weather seals and fitting parts for a matchup and actual operating things like door latches, stuff like that. Anyway, thanks for stopping by today and come back and see us again.